Welcome everybody. It's really nice for me to be here today because I'll be talking to you about something which has been instrumental in my own teaching for many, many years. So let's get started. And the, the first thing is uh, just trying to pull down what is a project. Tom Hutchinson, an OUP author who's used projects extensively, tells us that it's an expend, extended piece of work on a topic and where the content and the presentation is determined by the learners. I'd focus very much on the idea that it's about topics, that it's over uh, a period of time, and that the learners have quite significant agency in uh, a piece of project work. The first project I did with my own students went beyond the classroom, but not too far beyond the classroom. That is the cathedral in the background, and it was right next to my students. And one day when I discovered they actually knew very, very little about their own cathedral, then I stopped the class there and then and took them down, and we took a tour of the cathedral, and the idea was born, okay, this is the project. I'm going to share out different aspects of the cathedral, and my students are going to prepare their little mini presentation as guides to each other as we walk around the cathedral. Another project that was suggested itself almost immediately was getting them to describe regional dishes. We were working in a school of tourism and there's quite a, a lot of complex language between describing things like this and I thought okay here's another good project. A third was getting them to actually create and present an interactive museum. Uh, back in the late 1980s um, and uh, early 1990s, museums in Spain broadly were come in and look at things in glass cases. And museums in Britain at the time had gone interactive, where you actually lived out some sort of experience connected to the, the topic of the museum. We took part in activities. And I turned this into a, a project for my second year students. Another was just do a weather forecast record it and uh, put it onto a place where tourists could access the weather forecast. Other projects included theme park design and one that I particularly liked was when my students were told to go out in their groups and to find out what provision existed in Asturias at that particular moment in time for disabled tourists. The next is to take the plunge. You've, you've just got to go and do it. Don't read too much. And the way I think you can best take the plunge is, number one, choose the group that you really get on well with, because they're going to have to trust you. And once you've decided which group you want to do this with, explain to them and use Spanish if you have to, so it's a totally free conversation, the why and what of projects, your reasons behind wanting to do a project with them in their English class. Next thing is to start small and keep it short, because if students aren't used to learning English through project work, then they'll need to see that it does work, and that means keeping the project relatively short in terms of time. Get your students working in pairs or threes, or if you feel confident and it's a natural group, allow them uh, into fours, but I wouldn't let them into groups bigger than fours because inevitably there'll be this friction of so-and-so's not doing enough and they're not actually helping the group, etc., etc and allow the students to choose their own grouping because then you've overcome any frictions of people in a class not having a good dynamic together. And um, If they have to find information and they're not too brilliant on the website, then give them websites to go to. If it's specialized information that can't be found on a website and it's in certain books that again aren't very available, then do the work yourself photocopy or scan the data and make the information available, especially in early project work, so that students don't have the sensation that we would like to do this, but it's impossible because we can't get the data. And then initially also avoid making the moment of publication too public. And with teenagers, for example, too public might be that they have to perform in front of the rest of the class. And that's where modern technology is totally brilliant because they can actually do their little uh, YouTube and they can make it restrict, restricted access and you and their parents or chosen friends can be made the only people who see it. And last of all, as we've, we've just seen earlier, I think it's really important to evaluate all aspects of the project. 
Hi Robin, yes, well thank you very much for that, that was really a very interesting talk and I think you really provided a, a framework through which you know everyone attending can attempt project work in, in their classes now, so thank you. <laughs>